1971 was an absolutely incredible year for recorded music. And as witnessed by the fact that since the start of this year, 2021, we've had nothing but a slew of 50th anniversary releases of some of these classic albums and also accolades and, you know, more modern or contemporary to today musicians talking about the influence some of those albums had on them. Now, um, one album in particular, Joni Mitchell's Blue, was released originally on June 22nd, 1971. And it's celebrated this week, it's 50th anniversary. I was amazed by the amount in not only the mainstream, or I, I should say maybe the non-music or non-dedicated music press, how many articles there have been about this album. And it's no wonder. The Rolling Stone on their top 500 albums of all time has Joni Mitchell's Blue listed as number three, the highest by a female artist. National Public Radio in the United States said that Joni Mitchell's Blue was the number one album by a female artist of all time. Now, it's, a, it's an incredible document, let's put it that way. And um, I'm just going to say before I go into a few details about this album, if you haven't heard it, please, please give it a listen you will, I guarantee, be amazed, no matter what kind of music you like and you listen to. Now, um, Blue, the creative process for it, started just after Joni's breakup with Graham Nash from Crosby, Stills, Nash, or Crosby, Stills, Nash & Young. And during that period of writing and creating for the album, and even on its release date in 1971, she had started a very, in many ways, tumultuous relationship with James Taylor, who was just on the cusp and growing in massively in popularity and becoming essentially, you know, the, the star that he is today. He also was in the midst of a fairly bad heroin addiction. Now, why Blue is such a incredible album and so recognized both, you know, critically and just by, you know, music fans alike is I think partially because Joni stripped everything out. It's a very raw recording, uh, minimal musical accompaniment. You know, she plays guitar or piano or dulcimer depending on the cut and What's really amazing is that there's not only that, you know, audible exposure of her voice and the minimal instrumentation, but there's also the fact that she is laid bare and stripped everything, any walls, any barriers between her communicating her emotion in those songs to the listener. She's broken down the barriers. Chris Christofferson famously remarked that, hey, Joni, when he heard the album, you know, leave something for yourself here. She put too much on the table, in, in his opinion. She laid herself so bare emotionally. Now, another reason that this album is, you know, uh, important is that many people consider it one of the first, you know, breakup relationship albums. And, and we know over the years, you know, with Taylor Swift and, and many other artists, this has been a, you know, a, a, a focus of, of albums and songs, you know, for a long time, but many consider that the first complete album talking about not only breakup, but the trials and tribulations of a new relationship and being a partner to someone suffering an addiction. Now, one other thing that's very, very important to note here is that today that album would be an incredible thing. Back in 1971, think about where the world was in terms of, you know, women's position in the music industry in particular. And now consider the fact that Joni not only sings, performs on all the instrumentation, she wrote all of the songs on Blue, and she produced the album herself. Now, now think about that. Complete creative control and every detail of that music is her. 
And that's one of the reasons I think that it's, it's such an important, important recording. And, you know, congratulations to 50 years of that being, you know, an amazing recording when it originally came out and still respected today. Now, because, you know, this is an audio channel and not, not a dedicated music channel, I will also point out the fact that the recording, as I mentioned, being so minimal and so stripped and minimally produced, you know, no effects, multiple instrumentation, backing vocalists, none of that. It's a, it's a very pure and authentic recording in terms of the sound quality. So, like I said, if you haven't heard it, please give it a listen. And one other thing I'll point out, don't randomly go on, you know, all music and, and pick the two or three, you know, listed best songs off the album. This is another album that's meant to be listened to as an album in the original sequencing that came out on the LP. And that's important because you'll be taken on an emotional roller coaster ride as you go through the songs on side one and side two, or you know your CD has the same um, has the same lineup. So I urge you to listen if you haven't heard it. Uh, congratulations to to Joni. She's had some health issues lately. There's a great video where she did a very rare little snippet talking about. Uh, uh, her impressions and reflecting on the album Blue that's available online. You can Google it. I, I urge you to check that out. And, you know, while we're on the topic of great music, you know, albums celebrating 50 years this year, what are your favorites? What was your favorite album that came out in 1971? I'd really love to hear about it. Thanks again, as always, for watching.